Good evening, family. I hope you are very well. I must tell you something. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting so many of you at the fire conference um, in Wellington this past few days. God really blessed me to, to see you face to face and to experience the love that the Lord has placed in your heart for him and for the body of Christ. So that really blessed my heart and we had a fantastic fire conference. Don't stop praying. Keep on praying that the Lord will pour out his spirit everywhere, starting with us, Amanda, and each and every one of us that's watching tonight. So um, welcome to Generation Impact School of Prayer. I think you know me. I'm Amanda LaRue. We are in session 55 tonight. I'm actually completing last week's session, and we are still speaking on prayer evangelism and um, preparing strategic prayer teams, God's army for battle. And at the moment, we are focusing on, on how to prepare yourself and how to prepare the different members of your prayer team to really be in connection with Holy Spirit and to pray from the spirit I mentioned, but also so that we can be one with each other. The prayer that Jesus prayed in John 17, remember? Father, verse 23, 23 um, let them be one as we are one. So God's heart is that there will be no division, that all of us will really be connected with the Holy Spirit, with the Trinity, and understand how to align ourselves first and foremost with the Trinity so that when we come together, we are all already connected with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that is living in me. And, and in that, we are also connected with each other. Amen? So we understand why we are focusing so much on preparing individuals to become part of prayer teams. And I really want to emphasize this tonight again. You can use this material to raise up your family to be a powerful unit in prayer, part of the army of God. You can use this material to raise up the what I call fire groups in your community, those who need to pray with you, that God has called to pray with you for revival and whatever assignment, prayer assignment that the Lord gives you, you know, as a team individually. Every prayer team has a um, specific assignment family. And sometimes all the prayer teams all over South Africa come in agreement for one specific purpose or one specific call from heaven. So here is, um, we are, tonight we are in point seven, point four. And how do we pray according to the will of God and the desires of the Holy Spirit, of Holy Spirit? So there is, um, you know, this is exactly where um, the gift of tongues and speaking in tongues comes in. I know some people might find it a bit difficult to understand that praying in the spirit is not only praying in tongues, but praying in tongues is only praying in the spirit. Okay, so praying in the spirit have it's got different dimensions to it. And one of the dimensions is praying in tongues. So when I pray in the Spirit, I pray according to the will of Holy Spirit. When I pray in a tongue, when I pray in tongues, I pray perfectly according to the will of the Holy Spirit. And I will explain it to you. So when I pray in a in a tongue or in tongues, I speak to God 
only I do not speak to men. When I pray in tongues, Holy Spirit utters secret truths and hidden things that are not obvious to our understanding. We cannot understand it. Okay, that is exactly why many people are against speaking in tongues because they feel they can't understand it. But I will show you in the word of God, it was meant to be this way. It is God's um, way to, to, to give us a communication um, a, a language between us, each individual and the Trinity that nobody can interfere with or understand to corrupt the words or whatever. So when I pray in tongues, I edify and I improve myself. So praying in tongues is extremely important because the, the Father gave this, uh, let's say, a gift unto us. There's three dimensions to speaking in tongues, okay? Tonight, we are only touching on touching the surface of the um, discipline to pray in a tongue in my personal, private um, time with the Lord. Okay. So when I pray in a tongue, I said I edify and I improve myself. And um, that is why tongues are so important. When I pray in a tongue, my desires begins to change. Okay, when my desires change, my nature begins to change. My nature becomes like the nature of Christ because it is the Holy Spirit that, that helped me to pray in tongues. And I will show you, it's him praying to Father the mysteries that only they know about, stuff that needs a bit of a tweak in my life, and things that I need to discover that's not in order. And this is the way that the Lord in his sovereignty chose to edify me and to shape me to my, my old nature to become like the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And can I tell you something? Because Satan cannot understand tongues and because he can see the fruit of tongues, he see the change when you are disciplined in praying in tongues, he see the power and the authority that develops in my life. That is why he would want um, us not to desire to receive a tongue and why he would actually want even reborn people that's not spirit filled and did not receive the, um, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, only their spirits were revived with salvation, but they never received the, um, the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, would want those people to persecute the people with tongues, that's speaking in tongues. And I think many of you can identify with me in this. So when my nature changes, as I pray in tongues and, and the Holy Spirit edifies me and it corrects me and it shapes my new nature, my prayers begins to change. My prayers will no longer be self-focused, self-centered, soulish. I will no longer try to change people and manipulate God and try to turn his arm to change people to suit my desires. No, I will change. My nature will change. The nature of my prayers will change. And I can finally align my prayers with what Holy Spirit is already praying. And Holy Spirit is praying what Jesus is already interceding for. Remember what I said? Jesus intercedes for us day and night. We never need to run around feeling um, anxious to find a person to pray for us for a certain or a specific situation. We can reach out and stretch ourselves out to heaven 
just stretch yourself out to heaven and say, Jesus, you are already interceding for me. You promised me you are doing it. I do not know what to pray. I know you are praying for me. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because the word says that when I do not know what to pray, Holy Spirit also intercedes for me with groanings and sighs. And as we stretch out, reach out into Christ, he can actually, through the Holy Spirit, deposit in me, in my heart, in my spirit man, the prayers. And as I pray in tongues, Holy Spirit is doing the work. And we see it in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 to 4. So, the word says, for one who speaks in an unknown tongue, speaks not to men, but to God. Isn't this, friends, think about it, that you have a direct line to Father God. And one of the ways that you can speak to him is in your tongue. For God, for no one understands or catches this meaning. Because the Holy Spirit, he utters secret truths and hidden things, not obvious to the understanding. So here we have a team, the Trinity, working together to pray on my behalf the secret hidden things and truths in the presence of Father. Isn't this phenomenal? Who doesn't want that? I want that. I'm putting up my hand. Let me tell you, it took me quite a while to receive the um, baptism in the Holy Spirit, to receive a tongue. Okay. But the moment in a small little church in Muenwe, in the Northwest, in a missions church, one Sunday morning, I was a desperate mom of a little baby and under two-year-old son. And um, I've, I've desired the tongue, but I never received when people prayed for me, you know, with, uh, for the um, infilling of Holy Spirit. I never received my tongue. And this morning, this missions pastor, he said, he, the Holy Spirit told him there's a person in the church and we were only about 15 or 20. And, and I was sort of the odd one out, okay that never received the tongue, that desired tongue, come forward. So I jumped up. I forget about my, my babies. I left them with my mom in love, and I ran to the front. And as this very humble pastor, working with the poorest of poor in Moinui, started to pray for me, I did not only receive my tongue, I I started to sing in tongues and I couldn't stop. So they had to take me out of church into a small little room in the back of the church so I can sing my heart out in tongues and I can continue with the service. It's amazing. Once this happens with you, family, you will know, you will know by no doubt this is God. Now, verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 14 says, but on the other hand, the one who prophesies, who interprets the divine will and the purpose in inspired preaching and teaching, speaks to men for their upbuilding and constructive spiritual progress and encouragement and consolation. This is the purpose of prophecy. Whilst verse 4 explains the purpose of tongues. He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. Tongues is to edify and improve himself. When you know, when you speak in a tongue in public in a church setting or so, the Lord requires an, an interpretation. I klag van 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 tale. This wat ons in Afrikaans sê. The Lord wants interpretation. But when I pray in tongues in my office where I sit right now, the only thing that happens, it's a prayer prayed by Holy Spirit through me.
to the Father, its mysteries, its truths, its hidden things that is praying. And the purpose of the tongue is edifying and it improves yourself. And then the word says, but he who prophesies, interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration, edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. It's phenomenal. So praying in tongues is doing that for me personal. Prophesying is doing that for the body. So the Lord doesn't want us to speak in unknown tongues in a church setting without interpreting. I'm now not talking about when we come together to pray, okay? Sometimes we can pray in the spirit and we can sing in the spirit. And we can pray in tongues and sing in tongues. And then the word says, and I will read it again today, and then we pray intelligently with our mind as the Holy Spirit gives. And we can sing intelligently with our minds. So what I'm going to share with you right now is not in your notes, but I will send it out with the next set of notes, okay? In the Greek, the word in the spirit, in the spirit is pneumati. And that is wind, breath, spirit, speaking of Holy Spirit. In a tongue, in the Greek is glosai, glosai. It is the tongue by implication, a language. So pray in the spirit is to pray with the wind, the breath of the spirit. To pray in a tongue is to pray in a heavenly language. We cannot pray in tongues if we do not have the Holy Spirit. If we pray in tongues without the Holy Spirit, it's a demonic tongue. It's a dimension of the kingdom of darkness. And we need to take note of that. Okay. So I've prayed for many people that had a demonic tongue because they received the tongue before they were saved. So they were without Jesus. The spirit was, was still not um, 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 reborn and they did not receive baptism with the Holy Spirit. So I want us to look at Jude 1.20 again tonight. And Jude 1.20 says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith, continually progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the new Marty. Pray in the new Marty. In this, when you go to the Greek, it is not pray in the glosé, in tongues. It is pray in the new Marty. All right. You can go back to session 50 to learn more if you missed it. So in one of the commentaries, it says the following. Um, Jude 1 verse 20 and 21 is an exhortation to strengthen themselves in the faith by prayer, godliness, and hope. So in this case, it is to, to edify and to build yourself up and to, and to exhort yourself to grow in faith by prayer, godliness, and have hope in God. So building up yourself, the, the commentary said, making yourself firm on the sure foundation of faith in contradiction to those who separate the fancy and fancy themselves firm in the impious conceits. So the Lord does not want us to be faithless and doubt in him. He wants us to continuously grow in faith. So it's very important that we should note, um, um, you know, this. And then faith and, it's, and, and praying in the spirit is very important. It's a, or praying in the spirit to build your faith is an important discipline that each and every 
child of God that wants to be part of the army of God, part of the prayer force of God, should learn to do. Okay. And faith is a foundation. So without praying in the spirit, I cannot build myself up in my most holy faith. It's not possible. So it's a discipline that all God's children need. Then praying in the Holy Ghost, the commentaries say only in this way can Christians make firm their foundation. So if I want to make the foundation of faith firm, you can go and read in Hebrews um, 6 verse 1, the word speaks of the foundation of faith and repentance. Uh, um, uh, yeah. So you need that in your life, okay, to, to really grow strong in your Christian walk and in the walk with God as a new creation. So the Greek, um, uh, again, you know, is using the word actually Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. And it is, um, it's really an important thing to understand tonight that to pray in the Holy Ghost means we pray in the strength and in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, of God led by the Holy Spirit. We pray in the strength and the wisdom of God led by the Holy Spirit. This is important for us to know. So the flow of tongues is a natural fruit of oneness between me and the Holy Spirit and the, or the Spirit of the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord is the Holy Spirit. We can say that tongues flow from this supernatural unity between the Spirit of the Lord and us. It's important. It's so phenomenal, family. We find that in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, the word says, but the person who is united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. So when we are one spirit with the Lord, we need to understand that there's a dimension of prayer that we call praying in the spirit. And, and a facet of praying in the spirit is to pray in tongues. And praying in tongues is important because it edifies me, it develops me, it changes my nature. It, it changes the way I see things, how I respond to things and how I will pray. So when I pray in tongues, my spirit, by the leading of Holy Spirit in me, Praise. While praying in tongues, my mind is not actively involved in the prayer. My spirit is actively involved, but my mind is not actively involved. And we see that in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 14 to 15. And the word says, for if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays. But my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit or helps nobody. So it's only my spirit that's productive and that is cooperating uh, um, by the prompt and, the, and with the leading of Holy Spirit. Verse 15 says, so what shall I do? And, he, and Paul answers, I will pray with my spirit but I will also pray with my understanding. So that's why many times we pray in tongues and we pray in tongues and then words start to flow. Understanding start to flow. And he continues and he says, I will sing in the spirit and then I will sing with my understanding. So it's very important for us to, to really know tonight that where speaking in tongues fits in to praying in the spirit and how the two works together. Um, so now in point 7.5, we are going to speak how do we grow in our oneness with Holy Spirit in prayer. So um, we 
said in session 47 that the first order of a warrior's prayer life is praying for ourselves. Amen? If we do not pray for ourselves, our prayer life in the corporate body will not really be effective. When we do, the mighty hand of God surrounds us with the fire of his spirit, the wall of fire around us will supply us with the strength to fight, to stand in faith and in prayer. The Lord says he's coming back. He's concerned that when he's returning, that he will find faithfulness in prayer, faith in prayer. That is in Luke 18 verse 8. So when we bring the two dimensions together, the word of God and the spirit of the Lord, we see a phenomenal blessing. Now listen to 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. And now, sorry, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 to 18. It says, now the spirit, the Lord is the Spirit. The Lord, Jesus, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage to freedom. So the Lord Jesus himself is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So we just read in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, that our unity with the Lord um, becomes, make us actually one spirit with him. So, verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 3 says, And all of us, as we, with unveiled faces, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are constantly, constantly being transfigured into his very own image in every increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So now we see how our involvement in the Word, as we read the Word, as we pray the Word, as we look into the Word, um, uh, as into a mirror, uh, you know, the glory of the Lord are continuously transfiguring us into his very own image. And this increase um, of the transfiguration into his image, um, uh, you know, the increase of his splendor, uh, it's from one degree of glory to another. The more we are in the word, the more we are in the spirit, the more we look like Jesus. So as intercessors, we can never, ever separate the word and the spirit. And praying the word and praying in the spirit. Because they are one, they, the word and the spirit. And because I am united with Christ, we are united in spirit and in truth. So, we cannot say it's more important to pray scripture than to pray in the spirit. Although the Lord says in his word, and I think it is in, um, it is in Psalm 138 verse 2, that he has exalted his word above his name. He has exalted his word above his name. So the word of God is even above the name of God. And we have learned Jesus is the word. So we are united with the word, with the Lord, with Jesus, and therefore became one spirit with him. So it is, I just want to give you that, that scripture quickly. Yeah. It's uh, um, Psalm 138, verse 2b, okay? So for us as intercessors, we need the word and the spirit to be transfigured into God's glorious image and likeness. As his army, as the prayer force, we need to understand how to walk with God 
as a new creation. Part of the new cre being a new creation is to be controlled, directed, led by the Holy Spirit. One of the gifts he gave us as a sign that the Holy Spirit is with us is praying in tongues. Not only praying in the Spirit, but praying in tongues, okay? He says, for those who desire it, he will give it. So my prayer life will become vibrant and effective if I choose to unite myself fully with the word, Jesus Christ, in other words, and his spirit. By allowing Holy Spirit to pray through me as I faithfully pray in my unknown tongue and in the spirit. And it's like Paul. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18, I thank God that I speak in strange tongues, languages, more than any of you or all of you put together. So I ministered to an elderly Indonesian man in Ambon. I had to pray for him. He was part of the people that, that came for, for prayer. He was sick. He sat in the, the tent that was allocated for all the sick, very sick people. And my translator, um, you know, translated English to Bahasa. So as I prayed in English and spoke in English and she translated, Suddenly, this elderly man that I could see really dearly loves the Lord Jesus start to speak fluent Afrikaans to me. And I realized what was happening here. It's the gift of unknown languages. What happened with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, where everybody that came to Jerusalem could understand what the disciples, different disciples were saying. And I stopped my translator and I said to her, don't translate, I am going to speak to this man. And I spoke to him, he understood in Bahasa what I said, and he answered me and I, I stood in my, I understood in Afrikaans what he said. And it's such a phenomenal thing that happened that night for me in my life. Because for the first time, I saw this, this gift in operation, the gift, where you speak in different languages and you understand each other. But it's something different from praying in tongues. And I hope that tonight you have a more clearer picture and revelation of the purpose of praying in tongues, the importance of praying in tongues to, to edify yourself to build yourself up, and also um, the role that Holy Spirit plays in praying in tongues, and that praying in tongues is one of the ways that we pray in the Spirit. Amen. So let us pray. Our Father, thank you for your children. Thank you for your sons and daughters. Thank you that I know as we pursue and say from from the 26th on for 10 days, Lord, pursue you for a mighty outpouring of your spirit in each one of us, in each home, in each community, and in our nation, God. I pray meet your children right where they are. Meet every one of your sons. Meet every one of your daughters right where they are. Fill us afresh. Baptize us afresh with your power, with your spirit. Empower us to become witnesses um, of what Jesus did on this earth to the world in Jesus' mighty name. And family, as I always say, I really dearly love you. My Abba bless you. Have a lovely evening.